Now, scalings are much richer than shifts. Scalings can really throw you, and I'll give you a couple examples. So you have to be, I don't like the word careful. I, I, what I would like to say is you should expect to have more fun with scalings, which is just a multiple, a constant multiple in front of x. That's all I'm talking about, compared to shift. So how about integral? So previously we just added a constant to x, and that changed almost nothing. Just ended up being the same change in the final answer. Here, there is an additional change, which is a coefficient in front of x. Does that change anything? Okay, so this is actually no different from what we did in the last lecture when we were talking about in-your-face integration by inverse chain rule. Okay? Except it doesn't look like it, because there the pattern was something that you can something that you recognize as a derivative of an expression times the derivative of that expression. Remember that chain rule signature? Right? You remember the signature? And what, uh, what our eye was looking for was this term. That was the more complicated term. And then we always hoped that hanging out next to it was the derivative of what was inside. And then we're golden. So we saw that in all of the examples we considered last time. But now we're not seeing that, kind of. We're just seeing the one thing. Okay, but we have to realize that because of the simplicity of what's going inside, it's kind of there. So there's only one possible intelligent guess here, is that it's minus cosine of the same thing. Okay. So that's the one thing it could be, but now we have to be maybe a little bit nervous compared to yesterday because once again we're looking for the derivative of the inside. Okay, so just to think it through, always go back to first principles and let's apply the chain rule to this function and check it by differentiation. So cos minus cosine gives you sine, great, of 2x minus 3, good, times the derivative of 2x minus 3. Minus 3 does nothing, obviously goes away, but 2x produces a factor of 2. So when we take the derivative of this, there would be an additional factor of 2 that's not in our target. So to make up for it, you need a 1 half. Okay? So it's the exact same thinking as last time, even if the pattern looks much simpler. Okay, simple enough? It almost seems like whenever there is a coefficient of whatever in front of x, you just end up with 1 over that coefficient, additional factor of 1 over that coefficient, in your final answer. Because that's the derivative that's missing here. So for this to be a perfect result of applying the chain rule to something, there would be an additional factor of 2, because that's the derivative of 2x minus 3. And I just want to draw the parallel with what we did last time. Last time, there would be x to the fourth inside, and so you were looking for x cubed on the outside. Now that there's just 2x, we're looking for a lot less, just a constant. And the constant is basically always there, because you can always artificially put it in.